Good evening, I'm Jim Whaley. Tonight is a great pleasure to welcome to Cinema Showcase a very fine actor, Mr. Desmond Llewellyn. He's known to film audiences for his appearances in practically all of the James Bond films as the wonderful master of gadgets, Q. We'll be talking about the latest James Bond film, Octopussy, and have several scenes from it to show you. So join me as I talk with Desmond Llewellyn tonight on Cinema Showcase. Thank you very much for joining Cinema Showcase and joining me on welcoming Desmond Llewellyn. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. It's lovely to be here. When you first began the, the James Bond series, you were not in the first film, Dr. No. No. Q did no. not make his appearance until... Well, he did, Love. only in, in a different character. Ah, I see. When, you, when the series began, did you have any idea that it would turn out to be as incredibly successful as it has been? No. I don't think anybody, I don't think anybody could have thought so. I mean, after all, this is our... 21st year, 21 years of Bond, it really is quite, quite incredible. It is. It is. What do you think is it about the Bond films that keeps audiences coming back in droves? Well, it is pure escapism. I mean, you sit there, you watch these beautiful girls, the wonderful scenery, everything. But I think really, it, if you want to go back into it in depth, that it all goes back to Ian Fleming and Cubby Broccoli and the producers and people of the films have obeyed his dictum because he was asked I think before we most likely started writing the books uh, what was the ingredients the best ingredients for a thriller and he said to any shocker story add all the ingredients of expensive living give Bond the right background the right clothes and the right girls set your stories in the most beautiful and exotic places Describe everything in minute detail. For instance, he doesn't have a cocktail. It is shaken, not stirred. Mm -hmm. All details. Mm -hmm. And then take your story along at such a speed that nobody will notice the idiosyncrasies <laughs> of the story. I mean, all right, Bond smokes these rather expensive cigarettes. Well, I mean, we know that's ridiculous. I mean, he'd only have to leave one in the hotel and the chap would come along and say, oh, Bond the spy's <laughs> been here. <laughs> So take it along, it's such a fast clip that nobody notices. Nobody notices. Yeah. And everything is bigger than life. Mm -hmm. I mean, you go into a hotel, all right, for you and me to go into your hotels here, you think, gosh, this is wonderful. What a fantastic place. But what about the people who usually, I mean, who live in that sort of atmosphere, when they see a Bond film, even they gasp. Because I don't care what the name of your hotel is, in what town it is in. The best hotel is not good enough for Bond. <laughs> it is made even more beautiful, more luxurious. The girl behind the desk may be an absolute knockout, mm -hmm. but she's not good enough for Bond. We have <laughs> someone even better. So I think that is the thing, that it is bigger, better, and it is pure escapism. You mm -hmm. can sit back there and all the worries of the world just wash over you while you sit back in this world of real make-believe. The character of Q uh, is such an interesting one, and I'm wondering when you took over the role in, in the second film, how much of it was actually uh, clearly defined in the script or, or by Ian Fleming, or how much was, uh, was added? Oh, no. In the, in the first film, I mean, it was purely this uh, man comes in and he demonstrates the briefcase. And, I mean, there was really no character in the part. You were just explaining. You press this button, you did this, and you did that. And um, I did it. And, obviously, people liked it. But, I mean, he, he, anybody could have done it. Mm -hmm. And then, in the second film, uh, Goldfinger, I luckily was asked to play the part again. And I remember distinctly, well, I was working in my workshop, and Bond comes in, it's, so, and I'm going to show him the new Aston Martin. And I got up to greet him. And the director, which was Guy Hammond, said, no, 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 you don't do that. You don't take any notice of him. I said, well, why? I mean, what, what? He said, oh, no, 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 you don't like Bond. 
And, you know, one had had these terrific notices. The, the films have been so successful, James Bond, the great hero, you know, and to sort of think, well, why don't I like him? And he said, well, you see, he treats you all your... I mean, that suitcase, for instance, you gave him, he just treated you with, with disrespect. I mean, it, he didn't sort of thank you for it or anything, so you don't really like Bond. Mm -hmm. And then, thanks to the uh, Richard Mainbaum, who was writing the scripts in those days, um, one saw that angle and worked on that, and one tried to keep it up. But, of course, it's, it's difficult because various different authors have <laughs> different ideas yeah. for Q. Yeah. I mean, if we'd had one author going right the way through, I mean, Q would have been simple because he would have latched on to what had happened first and one would have gone through. But then every different author mm -hmm. altered Q slightly and I had to alter him back to get into what my idea. But now we're back again with uh, Michael Wilson, who's a new author, and Richard Mainbaum. And mm -hmm. in this new film, they've given me what I call the old Q. He's grumpy mm -hmm. and disagreeable to Bond and thinks what a nuisance he is. But again, one's got to be very careful. I, I watched the rough cut of this, that he doesn't become too disgruntled. Mm -hmm. You know, that it doesn't become too monotonous. Yeah. So um, if I'm asked to do it in the next film and I sort of got roughly the same part. One's got to watch that very carefully. Q probably looks upon Bond as sort of a, a wayward son, perhaps. Uh, yes, I think, I think that's a very good way of looking at it. I think he obviously, uh, he must respect him mm -hmm. and, and like him, but he just thinks he's a damn nuisance. <laughs> <laughs> so actually then we can, we can thank Guy Hamilton back in Goldfinger for, for giving you the sort of... Uh, giving the clue, yes. The clue oh, definitely, to to yes. And then all the other directors naturally have helped mm -hmm. as the films have progressed. We have a, a retrospective, a brief retrospective of uh, some of your appearances in the Bond films, and uh, I think it begins with one of the uh, the early Sean Connery ones, and on up into the Roger Moore ones. So why don't we take a look at that, and then perhaps come back and comment on some of the uh, the various gadgets you've invented. Yeah, sure. All right, let's take yeah. a look at that right now. An ordinary black leather case with 20 rounds of ammunition here and here. An ordinary tin of talcum powder. Inside, a tear gas cartridge. That goes in the case against the side here like that. It's magnetized, so it won't fall. Shut the case. Now, normally, to open a case like that, you move the catches to the side. If you do, the cartridge will explode in your face. You got it? Yes, I think so. Is that all, sir? Yes, thanks very much. All right. Yo. That's a nasty little Christmas present. So if I heard correctly, Scatamanga got away. Yes, sir. The car, the sprouted wings. Oh, that's perfectly feasible, sir. As a matter of fact, we're working on one now. Don't you shut up. This is now being issued as standard equipment. Strap it on your wrist. It's activated by nerve impulses from the wrist muscles. Like this? <laughs> Very novel, Q. You must get them in the stores for Christmas. Ah, there you are, 007. Balls, Q. Bolus, 007. <laughs> Good. Have that ready for Army Day. Yes, sir. I want that ready for Ackman's tea party. Uh, look what Q's brought for us. Isn't it nice? Right. Now, pay attention, 007. I want you to take great care of this equipment. There are one or two rather special accessories. Q, there. have I ever let you down? Frequently. Oh, I see you managed to get the Lotus back together again. I disregard these jibes about our equipment, 007. I don't suppose you find it funny in the feet. Indeed, I don't.
rubbish. They're simply not stepping up the reception sufficiently to enable... Oh, shut up. A retrospective look at the adventures of Q, as portrayed by my guest, Desmond Llewellyn. You have had some incredible adventures in the Bond films. I certainly have. But my word, doesn't it age one? <laughs> now, this is the original This one. is the original case. And as you will see, we've both aged in the service <laughs> of Bond. I'm afraid the, the knives don't come out anymore. Um, they used to, mm -hmm. as you saw in the film, they flashed out, then they flopped out, and now they just won't come <laughs> out at all. We still got the tear gas cartridge, mm -hmm. but um, we haven't anything else. Well, that I think really it's good works. the knives don't come out because one is coming oh, right here, right into you. Yes, yeah. Yeah. that's amazing. So this is actually this is actually tw twenty years old. Twenty years old. Yeah. Goodness. Well, you haven't aged a bit. Oh. The, 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 the case, perhaps, maybe. But Nonsense. <laughs> I was going to be very impolite then. <laughs> I remembered I'm on of, television. Um, of all of the incredible inventions that Q has been responsible mm. for, is there one that the public still finds most fascinating? Well, I still th I, I think they still think of the Aston Martin. Mm -hmm. you know, it, there was there'd never been anything like it before. I mean, this incredible car. And again, there's nothing new in that. I mean, after mm. all, um, aeroplanes have ejector seats, so why shouldn't a car? Mm -hmm. And incidentally, when they tried out the ejector seat for the first time, when they put it, fitted it in the car, luckily they put a dummy in the driving seat because it went straight through the roof of Pinewood <laughs> Studios. But no, the knives come out of the, um, uh, the wheels. Well, that happened in Ben-Hur. Mm -hmm. um, and the oil slicks and all those various things. Well, in America in Prohibition times, I believe yeah. the, the booze runners and all those, they had all those tricks. Sure. But the point is that it was all collected and put into one car. Do people expect you, Desmond Llewellyn, the actor, to be technologically uh, oh, yes. superior uh, in these, these matters? Oh, I'm, so, I'm afraid they do. And are I you? Mean, uh, no, no, I'm not, because um, I, as I always tell people, my wife's got one of these watches, you know, that tells the date and the time. When you get to February or in June, you see, <laughs> you've got to move it on. Well, I twist the handles, and she twists the handles, and sometimes we can't make it work, and I <laughs> have to take it into a shop, and the shop in and they go, but you can't make it work. <laughs> and I say, well, I'm afraid I can't. <laughs> <laughs> That's marvelous. Um, when the change came about, uh, of, um, when Sean Connery left the series, yeah. and uh, was temporarily replaced by George Lazenby, was there any any concern for the future of the series, or did everyone have confidence that the series itself was so strong it would continue? Well, it, I, I don't know, you see. I'm, I'm just a sort of, I, I mean, I am an actor. I'm engaged. I'm not on a contract or anything like that. So one is only engaged for the film. And when Sean left, um, you know, one didn't know what was going to happen. Mm. I don't think one concerned whether the series was going to run or not because, you know, um, one hoped to get more work or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. I mean, wasn't, uh, what I'm trying to say is that in those days I wasn't involved in the films. Right. And really it wasn't until, well, Diamonds are Forever, when I did a promotion tour as I'm doing now, and I had to learn about the gadgets. I mean, I thought that most of them were jolly nice things, but mm -hmm. I didn't realize that they all worked. Mm -hmm. And then I started to get interested, and as, I have, as I'm talking to you now, I had to learn something about the background of Bond and all that, so, so that I could chat away mm -hmm. as I am now. Mm -hmm. And it is then that I got interested in the Bond and became more involved in them. And um, as the films have progressed, I've sort of... Well, the part has grown slightly, too, yeah. which is nice. You know, a as you probably are certainly aware, um, there are those people who are absolute James Bond fanatics who know every single thing about oh, all the Bond Oh, it's fantastic. And, I mean, I'm a Bond fan. I, I love the films, but... Yes, um, but you, you can't tell me all my lines, can you? No, and some people can. Well, I can. I know. It's amazing <laughs> because um, I've learned quite a lot when I was talking to a chap the other day and I said something about um, oh, I can't remember which film it was and I said well I was doing and out came well I can't remember the lines but I presume they were right <laughs> no it is I've never met such fanatism as there are about these born people 
And it is awfully nice when you go around and you meet people, you know, that you, they all know about the films mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you, you can talk to them about it. Let's talk about this latest one, Octopussy. For those uh, watching who have yet to see yeah. the film, could you tell us something about the story of this one? Oh, dear. Is that, it I mean, it, it is fairly complicated. Mm -hmm. Let me just give you one little demonstration. Okay. Not demonstration, that's the wrong thing, but in here... We're not going to blow up, No, we? we're not. Okay. We have the Fabergé egg. Mm -hmm. Well, now, this was made by Claude Fabergé for the Tsars, you see, and it is in Russia. And this sort of is the basis, one of the basis of the stories. This gets stolen from the Russians. Mm -hmm. It goes from East Germany to West Germany, to India, to Britain, and Bond gets hold of it. I won't tell you how. Mm -hmm. He gives it to Q, who, in this little um, coach, he puts a homing device so that you can follow the um, egg wherever it goes. And sort of, this is one of the main things, but then they've got a circus in it. Oh. I think it's one of the most exciting films I've seen for ages. Mm -hmm. Absolutely on the end of your seat. It goes at, as I was saying at the beginning, at such a speed mm -hmm. that you don't really realize what nonsense <laughs> it is. <laughs> and you figure rather more prominently in this one than you Yes, I'm very lucky. I'm actually in the field. Uh -huh. I'm not confined to my workshop. <laughs> There's a nice scene of me in the workshop with Roger Moore. And then I get into a balloon with Roger Moore or Bond, as mm -hmm. I should say, and we go, I won't say to the rescue of the girls, because they've already done a very good job. But um, Bond leaves the balloon uh, while it's miles up, not miles up, up in the air, and crashes in through a window to save Octopussy. Mm -hmm. And I'm left in the balloon, and I see a villain down below who is just going to shoot one of the attractive girls, and I land the balloon on him, and I land the balloon and actually get kissed by a beautiful girl. So. Cues coming on. Really, indeed. One of Bond's frequent lines has always been, um, "It's always so rough out there in the field." So this time, oh, Q, so Q no, actually yeah. goes in the field. Yeah, too. well, it's not so rough for Q. He's <laughs> having a very good time. <laughs> we have a scene from the new uh, Bond film, so why don't we take a look at that and then um, come back and chat about it? Right. Here's a scene right now from the latest James Bond film, Octopussy. Ah, Q. How are you? Most unhappy 007, thanks to you. How can I be expected to maintain the quality of my work? Sent out here at a moment's notice? No proper facilities? Yes, well, you wouldn't have a smaller piece of thread than that, would you? Curious, somebody seems to have stuck a knife in my wallet. Oh, they missed you. What a pity. Karen, see to that, will you? I have uh, also mislaid my PPK. Anything else? Oh, that's okay. Hello, uh, Smithers. Commander. Smashing, Q. Come along. I've got a few things for you. Very nice, Smithers. Here. Is the homing device ready yet, Q? Not only a homing device, but an extremely delicate microphone as well. Goes in there like that. Now, ordinary fountain pen. Twist the top. And a highly concentrated mixture of nitric and hydrochloric acid dissolves all metals. Wonderful for poison pen letters. Pay attention, 007. Now, pull the top off the pen. Now, with this ultra-sensitive earpiece, you can listen in on the bug. The homing device is compatible with the standard-issue radio directional finder in your watch. If you haven't lost it. It's amazing, Q. It does work. Hmm. What's that? Oh, that's the latest liquid crystal TV. A scene from the latest James Bond film, Octopussy, featuring Roger Moore and my guest, Desmond Llewellyn. Um, one of the marvelous things about all the Bond films, I've felt, has been the, the music. Oh, and yes. in, in this film, I'm happy to note that uh, John Barry has returned as the composer mm. because he's written the music for, I think, most of the Bond films. Certainly. I think a lot of them, but the, and the more successful ones. But music certainly. does play a, a big part in these films, doesn't it? I think a terrific amount. And I think, um, you know, on Her Majesty's Secret Service, I think the music in that was absolutely mm -hmm. wonderful. That 
uh, We Have All the Time in the yeah. World, sung by Louis Armstrong. I Beautiful mean, song. It, I think, for me, that was the best theme tune of the whole lot. I'm glad you bring that film up because this, um, we were talking earlier, uh, was probably the least successful commercially of the Bond mm -hmm. films, but in many ways was an extraordinary film. Um, and do you suppose that the reason it was not that commercially successful was because it had neither Sean Connery nor Roger Moore in the role? Well, it's difficult to say, and we don't know, but I firmly maintain the reason it wasn't a success because James Bond wasn't played by an actor. Mm -hmm. You cannot get people off the streets. I mean, I know he was, um, it, he's done a lot of films since, and most likely is good, but he's had no training whatsoever. And how can you expect a man to um, portray Bond, especially when you're going to follow Sean Connery? Yeah, exactly. But, um, no, if you look at it really dispassionately, uh, he, he didn't give all that bad performance, but unfortunately, he got across the press and the press didn't mm -hmm. like him. Mm -hmm. But the film was, was The film is, I think, absolutely smashing. It's the most beautiful scenery and most beautifully directed by Peter Hunt. Mm -hmm. And um, if it had had Sean Connery in it, or if it had Roger Moore, I think it would have, um, by sort of film buffs, would have um, been equal to Russia with Love, yeah. which I think most people will agree was perhaps yeah. the greatest of all the Bond films. Do you have a personal favorite? Yeah, Russia with Love. I think favorite? I think it's the most lovely film. Mm -hmm. It's so amusing. Again, got the most lovely music. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. got beautiful background. It's got everything. Is I think as most of the Bond films have, but that is perhaps a little special. Is there a danger, do you think, in in the Bond films trying to top one another? Do you think they can go too far in trying to top the previous one? Because from Russia with Love, let's face it, was basically uh, simple compared to the to the others in terms of, uh, yes. of money and all of that. Yeah. Um, yes, it, uh, it's an interesting thing, that. Um, but I think they seem to work the uh, work it out because after all, you had Moonraker, this enormous space thing, mm -hmm. and people loved it when it came out. They all said, "Oh, this is the best film I've ever seen." Best Bond, and then gradually they look back and they say, oh no, I think there was a bit too much space and all that. But now, instead of trying to top Moonraker, they changed it completely and they had um, For Your Eyes Only, which was a much simpler mm -hmm. going back. And people all came away, oh, what a marvelous film. You know, that was terrific. That's the best Bond film I've ever seen. And then they think, well, perhaps not quite enough, actually. <laughs> you know, this, and now we've got this, the, this new one, Octopussy which is, I mean, it's got absolutely everything. Mm -hmm. What they're going to do with the next one, I don't <laughs> know, but... Um, Octopussy now has been produced by, by uh, Albert Broccoli, who has yes. done all of the Bond one films of them, released yeah. by MGM UA. Now, as everyone probably knows, there is uh, another Bond film due out uh, later in the fall, I believe, with yes. Sean Connery, again playing Bond. Mm. Now, uh, were you approached to be in this film, or do you know anything about this no, film? No, I know nothing about this film whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I've learned a certain amount during on this tour from people chatting to me, but mm -hmm. I mean, really, I know I'm absolutely just nothing if about be, it. If there will be a cue in it, if there will be a. I've a heard there is, yes. And I've heard his. I, I only heard today, actually, is played by a man I know, but I don't, ah. I don't know how, tr how true it is. Well, I mean, as everyone. It'd be interesting to see. Well, as everyone knows, Q is Desmond Llewellyn, so. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> is it true that, uh, that Ian Fleming, when he. Uh, when it was known that uh, films would be made of the Bond films, suggested Roger Moore originally for the part of Bond? I had heard uh, that. Well, I've heard that, but I, I, again, I don't know how true that is. Hmm. I think it might quite easily have been. But of course, um, Fleming may have had his idea what Bond looked like and everything, but he, but he never described Bond. Mm -hmm. There's no description of him in the, in the book. And in fact, I, I read somewhere uh, when they were talking about Fleming that he himself said that he never gave Bond very much character on purpose. He didn't describe him and he didn't give him much character so that the person who was reading the book could put the overcoat on and become Bond. Interesting. Which is an interesting yeah. thing, you see. What to you are the major differences between Roger Moore's interpretation of Bond and Sean Connery's? Roger is a much softer, um, much, I mean, he hasn't got that ruthlessness the whole time th that Sean had, 
and uh, Sean hasn't got perhaps the suavity that Roger has got. So that the people who saw Sean first um, naturally prefer him and think that Roger is too smooth, and people who see Roger first think that Sean is perhaps too tough too and too rough. Yeah. So, you know. Well, we've got the two bonds, yeah. and they are very. They, I mean, they, they they play it very the same. I mean, they're they're tough individuals, mm -hmm. and they haven't um, the authors and everything. I mean, they haven't modernised Bond. Bond is still Commander James Bond of the Royal Navy. He isn't Colonel Jimmy Bond of the SAS, <laughs> or you know, it, and he still wears his immaculate clothes. He doesn't go about in jeans and a mm -hmm. sweatshirt. So they have sort of, I mean, they're all that, he is still the um, XRN. I think that's an, an encouraging sign of continuity. That oh, uh, I think so, <laughs> yes. yes. And, and also, Lois Maxwell returns this time as Miss Moneypenny. Yes, she's Miss Moneypenny. Right. Sadly, she's Bernard been Lee, in them all. Bernard Lee died, unfortunately. No, Bernard uh, died, uh, but they've Lee. got um, a very good actor, Robert Brown, playing the parts. And mm -hmm. uh, I don't, well, I mean, I, we're not going to miss anything. It, I don't mean that the we shall miss Bernard naturally because he was such a very strong personality. But um, Brown's a very, very good actor, mm -hmm. and I mean, the people who've never seen this will be their first Bond film. I mean, he will be M. Exactly. Well, from the scenes we have seen, it looks like a marvelous film, and I want to thank you so much for coming by and talking about it. And um, well, a if you're in Atlanta again, I hope you'll stop by. I certainly will. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. My thanks to all of you. Until next time. Good night.